I woke up this morning and I was pretty terrified that I wasn't going to get my money and I, I did, thank God. And I'm listening to the news because it's early morning. And the algorithm has suggested some to Sam Kinison from 10 years ago, so I'm going to put that. I'm going to play that because I think it's healthy to remind ourselves of the comedians that we had no longer have with us because that motherfucker was funny. And here we go. Left a Corvette full of papers this week. Well, yes, it was, I, there were several stories. One was that I fled to Mexico, which I would never do, because why would I go to Mexico if food was milk? Why would I? But uh, one story was I was in Canada. Where was the Corvette found? Corvette was found on a winding road called Nicholas Canyon. And, and you uh, had rented it? No, I own it. It's, you own it? There was a lot of misinformation about this situation. And my security guard was driving me home from my uh, recording session. We're remaking a song called Highway to Hell, of all songs. And uh, what happened is we were coming on the corner and the wheels, hide the plane out from under us, just kind of slid clear. And we went to the side of a mountain and made it up between this pole. And a car came by behind us and they broke out the window and got us both out. And fortunately, we had seatbelts on and the only scratch I have is this. We're going to have a call AAA, which is on the records, so... Uh, oh, and the police found it later? Well, they were there in like 10 or 15 minutes, and, uh, you know... And what was the big deal? And the thing was like, yes, Kennison sought for investigation. And the abandoned automobiles, like, you know, yeah, anybody, right, else, right. anybody else would have been just, oh... Right. Or do you react angrily when something like that? I mean, that's well, a... Well, it's the of price crazy. of, uh, you know, fame, I guess, or looking like there's somebody that would be a troublemaker, which I'm not. Mild man, calm guy. So in other words, if, if you want to play this game, that's the results you got to get. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, feel like you're, you know, lead guitarist for Motley Crue, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna look like that. So. Were you a serious minister? Yeah, I was. I was. I just have a uh, kind of a relationship with God. Kind of like Colonel Sanders' fried chicken. It's got some <laughs> secret religious prices. Why did you leave it? That was a good I, became, one, wasn't it? I became the solution. I, I was never into the offering side of it. You know, I would pull out a basket and I'd say, hey, if I blessed you and you want to bless me, here's the basket. I didn't do very well, actually. You were not a good minister. <laughs> no. Well, not financially. I didn't, I didn't rake in the bucks. This is before the big satellite boom. You could have your own TV station, your own channel. Like and you left it, why? Because it wasn't proving fruitful? Well, I got a divorce, and it was like 1978. And I sat my family down at Christmas time and said, you know, I'm leaving the ministry now. And they thought I was going through a phase. They said, well, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to be a comedian. <laughs> they went, you know, yeah, sure. I said, no, really. I'm going to, I'm going to, try, my, I'm going to try to be a stand-up comic. I think I can make people laugh. I've made them laugh in church. If you can make people laugh in church, you can make them laugh anywhere. Right Hell yeah. Do you like your image? Yeah, I do. How would you describe it? I mean, you, it's very you ominous, it. actually. Yeah, people don't know a lot about it. A lot about me. This is maybe the most candid I've been, I think, in any interview. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. People get afraid of you. Or people say, Sam Kinison's on tonight. Someone said to me, Sam Kinison's on tonight. I said, to him, looking forward to me. You know what I mean? Like, they acted out of it. Like, out of fear. I wonder why I had to go through that metal detector, and I was well, I mean, first. Like, oh, well, 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 that, that I should be concerned you would do something bizarre? That... I don't understand that, because I've done Letterman. I've done Carson. I've done so why Larry and Children. Anything I've ever done, I've always worked within the boundaries of. And, uh, but I, they think I'm going to say, you know, some of those words that you shouldn't say or something like that. But I'm a little smarter than that. You're a professional. Yeah, I respect the medium, you know, whatever it is. Are you happy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had some tragedy in my life about a year and a half ago, but I'm dealing with it pretty well. And your my, brother. My little brother passed away. And it's kind of a, this know, uh, album, Leader of the Band. Yeah. This is music? One half of it is. And the other half is, I think, my most... Um, I think it's my best work. It's my best work is as a stand-up yet. Recorded where? At Bally's in Las Vegas. Oh, that yeah. big house. Though. Yeah, I, want, I wanted to do an album in Las Vegas, a comedy album. I don't know when the last time a comedian has actually recorded well, in a I'll casino. Bet it's 25 years. I bet it has. And I, go back to early big Vegas days. And I thought this is a kind of interesting angle that you know. And plus, I was you know I make a joke about being family entertainment, of course, which I'm not. And on the music side, are you doing? Uh, I'm singing it. Yeah. You're the other singer. I'm the singer. I can sing. We'll take some calls for Sam Kinison, Lakeside, Iowa. Hello. <laughs> Sam, you're probably one of the funniest comedians I've ever heard. 
But I, I uh, feel guilty once in a while laughing at your bizarre stories like playing a corpse in a mortuary. Where do, you, where do you draw the line on the looseness of your jokes? Well, that particular joke was actually a true story that I was told out here by a limo driver for a uh, funeral home. And when he told it to me, it just blew my mind. It was like one of the most horrifying images I have ever had. And it never occurred to me somebody would do that to a corpse after they were dead. And it just stuck, it hung with me for a couple of weeks. So they decided to tell it to me. I thought, wait a second, how can I get the audience to feel that same shock thing and then bring the full joke out of it? It took about a year, year and a half to find an angle where you can actually pull a joke out of it. This was to take the corpse's point of view. And go, oh, hey. <laughs> Sam Kinison's our guest. Yes, that's good. That was close. It was close. It's like a humor that Sam tells is something that he just does for humor or whether it's a reflection of his own person. Fair question, Sam. Uh, well, it's definitely part of our society. I made one joke and I said that they say heterosexuals die of age two and they won. And I throw the mic out in the audience. It was like, Capital Vermont. And it was <laughs> yeah, you know, it was just like one of those things, and uh, I thought it was like you know, a reasonable joke. A step yeah, towards one family joke. entertainment. Heterosexuals die of it to name one. Yeah, and off and, that one joke, you that one joke, joke gay basher. I got, yeah, I became the gay basher, and all of a sudden I was, uh, you know, Are you saying targeted you by these anti-heterosexual do anti, anti, uh, groups. and uh, <laughs> Anti-heterosexual <laughs> Uh, do you now do more gay humor because of No, it? matter of fact, in my next album, I did some medically correct jokes because they said my jokes weren't medically correct in my last album, which I remember when I went to medical school to write jokes, that was one of the big rules. Was <laughs> 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 medically correct, correct jokes. Uh, about AIDS. Anaheim, California, hello. <laughs> How you doing? Hi. Um, Sam, I think in your in your routines your social commentary is great and i hope a lot of people really pick up on it as, as much as i hope they do um thank you i wanted to ask you what you thought about andrew dice clay and what happened at the mtv awards and that whole mishap and him being banned do you think that he i mean he really didn't act appropriately or oh, what they mean? So. i think he was very unprofessional and i think he's a jerk i've known him for about 10 years and i think he's like the morton downey jr of comedy He'll be a big mouth for about a year, and then he'll burn out. There's not a lot of love between us. He ripped off some of my jokes. And, uh, all you have to do is play my album from 1986 and his current album, and you can find two or three jokes that I did back years ago. And he, all he did was reiterate them. So I can't wait for his career to die out like Larry Storch. Larry <laughs> Storch. Yeah. Other than that, you're crazy about this guy, right? Yeah, other than that. And what he did was unprofessional. I'm Is there very anything you like about him? No, nothing. Okay. I mean, he's like a combination of he took Fonzie's jacket, Stallone's attitude, and my jokes, and put them in a blender. And that's it. That's, yeah, that's so, uh, I don't care much about Are you me. still in love with Jessica Hahn? Uh, Were you ever in love with this. Jessica Hahn? I was never in love. We had a short affair because checkout time was too. <laughs> but, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's, uh. She's, uh. Interesting person. She's not dull. Not dull. We'll return with Sam Kinison. Okay. Yeah, Sam. Who, you want to talk about who's wide? And well, I, nobody said I was thin. Hey, nobody listen. said I was thin. But Sam, let me just remind like, you. I don't even want to talk to you. Yeah, I think so. We never just speak to each other again. Hold on, Sam. What, what, what do you wish hey, to say, there. Jessica? Hold well, on, Jessica. Larry. I mean, the guy goes into Las Vegas, he does a 10 minute act with me, he slanders me. You know, you can expect a call from my lawyer. You, you, no, yes, Sam, you don't well, want me to. Liar. Yeah, well, liar. You're, you're a spineless, talentless has been. You talk about Dice. Dice will make it way before you do, Sam. Good. And then you what, what, that? what went wrong between you two? It's Big Mouth. <laughs> uh, let's not talk about big orbs of the body. Hey, let me tell you something, which, Larry, when my mother died, she was screaming at me over the air on the Howard Stern show, and, uh, you know, the guy has no class, and I mean, I, I, I thought he was a great comedian, but anymore, his stuff is old, the material's old, you're old. So why don't you find a life? Why don't you find and a life? And leave me and Jim Baker alone. Yeah, right? why don't you... Get a career, give him a, give him a soap opera or something. All you gotta do is kiss and tell, that's your whole life. No, Sam, that's what you that's do on stage. Life, that's your whole life, Jess, you didn't get a job. Go to the car wash. You make thousands of dollars a night. It'll be a cashier in a car wash or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of making all this money, you're going to be a 
much money just to make that money. Larry, he makes thousands. See that, Larry? See that, Larry? Larry, he makes hundreds of thousands now, of dollars. Now, why do they want to spend a lot of time with this one? It's the way, it's and, uh, weak in L.A. Just, just keep going, Jessica. Thank yeah, you, Sam. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Sam. For all the memories. Ha, 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 ha.